Lord, the Lord has, has, has waken us up and allowed him to meet me, meet him. Amen. And this is the day that the Lord should made, has made and we should rejoice in what? Be glad in it. So I'm glad, I'm happy, excited in the Lord about all that God is doing. Let's go to the throne. Heavenly Father, Lord, we praise you. And God, as we stand here, God, on this day, I ask God that you would endure us, that you would equip us, that you would speak to us, that you'd speak through us. God, let this word encourage the hearts of the people. Lord, let this word be an equipping word. Lord, have your way in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God is so good. You know, we, hopefully you caught us yesterday in service, and uh, as we were together yesterday in service, you know, God had prompted me, if you will, that, that it's time for us as a body of believers to go into a season, a time of prayer and fasting. Amen. Mark uh, 9.29 says that this kind can only come out by prayer and fasting. Because I don't know about you, you know, it's, I feel like it's time out for some things. Amen? But this kind, what am I talking about? I'm talking about when we begin to look at the, the, the spiritual state, the spiritual attack. What am I talking about? I'm talking about this pandemic. Yes, it seems to be a natural thing, but it's a spiritual thing. Amen? <clears throat> the devil wants to draw us into a natural battle. Because he has an advantage, the advantage of dis, dis, deception and fear that can take place in the natural realm. Amen. But God wants us to understand that, as it says in Ephesians, that our battle is not against principalities. I mean, you know, our battle is not against flesh and blood, but it's against principalities of darkness and, and rulers of darkness. Amen. That's where our battle is. It's in the spiritual realm. Amen. It says this, it says, wherefore, it says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness and of this world, against spiritual wickedness in where? High places. This is our battle realm. But as long as they have us fighting, as long as the devil can be the puppet master and draw us into a fight in the natural realm, he has an advantage. But the Bible says that we should not be ignorant of Satan's devices, right? Lest he get an advantage of us. And so therefore, it's time for us not to be ignorant of his devices. What's his devices? His plot, his ploy, his plan. It's time for us to really know that it's time for war. This means war, right? And it's a spiritual battle. It's a spiritual warfare, right? And God wants us to move out in this. In Mark, if you will, first chapter, 35th verse, it says, and in the morning, Raising up a great while before the day, he went out and departed into solitary place and there prayed. Who am I talking about? Jesus. In the next verse, it says, Simon and they that were with him followed after him. But what was, what was happening? Jesus was looking for a place of solitary. Jesus needed time. Jesus needed time with Jesus. He needed time with the Father. We need a time of solitary. We need a time that we're setting aside. And that's why I say for the next, you know, today through Wednesday, we're, we're, we're fasting. Now, you seek the Lord in terms of what type of fast, whether it's a complete fast, whether it's a meal a day fast or a time fast, whatever it is, you seek the Lord. But, but, but guess what? Sometimes we feel like uh, whether we've accomplished our fast and whether it's been a good fast or not is is what we gave up. But it said, this kind cometh out only by what? Prayer and fasting. So the weapon that we must use is prayer. 
Fasting helps get us closer by beating down our flesh, by cutting out some of the distractions. Here we find that Jesus needed time at the height of his popularity. He needed time of solitude. He needed time to pray. He needed time to get himself where he needed to be. So if Jesus needs that, why won't we? And I need you to tap into this because, because not only um, uh, the things that I've spoken about do, is there warfare needed, but there's things in your own personal life that you need to do warfare on. And it's time for you to just stop pushing things aside and pushing it off, pushing it off, and just deal with it. It's time for you to go to war. Amen. And Jesus, once once the disciples came, he said, hey, let's go to the next town. He said, I need to preach. He says, that's my purpose. And so I'm telling you not to move away from your purpose, but I am telling you to put, put a pause button there or put a comma there just so that you can have a moment of prayer. And, 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 and I'm challenging you to have an hour of prayer a day. He said, whoa, wait a minute. You know, that's a lot of time. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. You know, it depends on your lifestyle. But I do know this, that if you break that hour down into segments, you know, you can do five minutes. You can do six minutes ten times, and you'll have, you'll have uh, uh, your hour, right? Or you can do uh, ten minutes or, or six times, and you'll have, you'll have your hour. Or you can do 15 minutes four times, and you get your hour. My point is, is that you can break it down to where you have um, your hour and you can get this done. But the reality is it's about you pulling away, seeking God, praying, and letting God begin to speak to your heart. For our battle is not against flesh and blood. And as long as you get caught up into all of this other stuff, you're going to be distracted. And so we're going to continue on this for our battle is not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against rulers of darkness in high places, right? And so God wants us to equip ourselves to go forward until tomorrow. I'll see you at 7 for 7. Be blessed. Have an awesome day.